Hello, my name is John Snyder and I'm assistant principal here at Wawasee High School. And we just want to take a few minutes today to honor our veterans. And even though COVID has changed a lot of things in our world, one of the things that we cannot forget to do is honor the men and women who have served in our armed forces and fought for our freedom. Today, we get to bring to you the story of Harry Michael, a true American hero who happens to be from the Wawasee community, a rural Milford farm boy who went and fought and died in World War II. We look forward to bringing you this story, his story, in a way to honor all of our veterans today. So thank you for watching. Welcome to Wawasee High School's Veterans Day program. Veterans Day is a day remembering and honoring all of the men and women who have served our great nation. In many cases, they have gave their lives to give us the freedom we have today. This sacred day was established post-World War I on November 11th, 1918, that dictates on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, the armistice halting the war to end all wars. Today we have a very important story from a man whose uncle, who lived in Milford, did give his life and was awarded the Army Medal of Honor, which is the highest military medal a service member can earn. The Medal of Honor is awarded to those who risk their lives above and beyond against an armed enemy of the United States. With us today is Dave Bumgardner, a 1971 Wawasee High School graduate who brings the story of one of our very own from the Milford community who attended Milford High School from 1933 to 1937, who not only fought for his country and gave his life for our freedoms, but was also awarded the Medal of Honor on February 13, 1946. Harry J. Michael had only turned 23 the day before he died. He was killed in action in an attempt to find and kill a sniper where he was shot and killed. Here's the story of Harry's heroic actions while he served in the Army for two honorable years. And welcome everyone uh, to this uh, November the 11th Veterans Day special that we're uh, putting together here. And it is my honor to introduce to you Richard Rhodes. Richard Rhodes is the nephew of Harry J. Michael. And Harry J. Michael is going to be the main focus from here on about to the show because Harry J. Michael is a Medal of Honor winner. And we've already given you some history on the Medal of Honor and how you go about how it's even awarded. But we're going to talk to Richard here and uh, talk about his uncle and his life and uh, tell, tell the Harry J. Michael story. So Richard, let's start out with we're actually in the home that uh, that uh, Harry grew up in. Yeah, yeah, this is the uh, family homestead. Uh, Harry was actually born in Benton, Indiana. Yeah, I saw and that. when Harry was three years old, uh, they moved to the family farm here. Uh, it was uh, Plumber Michael, uh, that was my grandfather, Plumber Ray Michael. Mm -hmm. And then he married uh, Ida Mae Michael, which is my grandmother, of course. So they moved to this uh, family farm, uh, the one that uh, we're living on right here now. And it was 155 acres back then on the yeah. family farm. Mm -hmm. It's neat that I get a chance to talk to you and uh, to uh, celebrate this incredible life of uh, of uh, Harry Michael. So um, let's just start. He went, went to Melford High School. So. Yeah, yeah, he went to Melford High School, and uh, he was uh, he was very athletic. He was on both the uh, basketball team and the uh, uh, baseball, baseball team. Yeah. I saw we got some letters. I saw some yeah. of those um, letters that you get for being in that, which they awarded back there. And see the year 1937 in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, and a lot of the uh, a lot of things I I've uh, come across about my uncle Harry was that he was he was really competitive. Yeah, yeah. I mean when he when he set his mind to do something, I mean he he didn't just do it halfway. He went whole hog on right, that. Right, yeah. right. So Absolutely. He was, yeah, he was really uh, vigorous uh, on anything. He Aggressive. Did, yeah. yeah. Any, anything he did, he went full force on. Right. Yeah. After graduation uh, from Melford, he went on to Purdue, which me being a Boilermaker, that makes me very proud of that. <laughs> um, but um, and then it was that time of year or time, though, that right there at the 40s and stuff, of course, the United States got involved in World War Two. Yeah. 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 Harry. Um, my uncle Harry, uh, when he was in uh, some of the things, uh, some of the things, uh, the le letters I've read about him and everything, uh, when he went to Purdue, some of the letters he wrote home here 
was uh, he was very proud of it. he actually went for his major was uh, animal hus- husband okay yeah yeah sure so and then uh, this is uh, about the time where the store uh, the uh, war started to ramp up right so uh, Harry and his uh, uh, a lot of his friends there at Purdue joined the ROTC mm-hmm. and everything and sure. t- took uh, officers training right. there and everything well I think that was one yeah. thing that about World War II I mean it was a total nationwide effort there was um, you know, literally millions of men and women that were willing to serve um, in their country, and including, I want to digress a little bit here, um, your father, of course, uh, and I've got pictures of that, and I'll show them to people, was a highly decorated uh, World War II um, um, soldier in his own right. Right, right. Yeah, Dad was in the 117th uh, Regiment of the 80th uh, Army Division, and uh, he uh, he received the Purple Heart. He uh, there was a uh, it, there was an artillery shell that exploded right outside his uh, foxhole, and uh, it went inside also and, oh, wow. and got Dad in the left foot. So he was actually in an army hospital in France for a little over a year. Wow! Wow! So, yeah. yeah. And then to take it even steps further, there your mother was a, um, a Navy nurse. Is that correct, Navy? Yeah, yeah. My mom was in the Navy uh, during the Korean War, and, mm-hmm. and she was actually. Uh, stationed in Hawaii at the time. Oh wow! And a, a little tidbit about my mother: uh, she actually uh, was able to uh, help treat the very first polio patient that received an iron lung. Oh wow! So, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was yeah. a little tidbit about my mom. Definitely. Yeah. So it's a family really steeped um, in military history here. Then uh, yeah, again, my, actually, my grandfather also was in World War One. Oh really? So yeah, so he now uh, was that Plomer or was that? Uh, yeah, that's Plomer okay. Michael. Okay, he was yeah. yeah. Okay, so he was in the trenches of World War One. And, wow. And he, uh, there's a story about uh, when my grandfather and my Uncle Harry, um, my Uncle Harry was so, so vigorous about wanting, yeah, no. wanting to get at the Germans right, to right. get in. My grandfather uh, realized that it was kind of dangerous for him to feel that way. So sure. they kind of got in from the uh, things that I've read, they kind of got in a big fight because- sure. Like, my grandfather said to my Uncle Harry, um, I'd rather you come back as a life coward than a dead hero. Right. And man, that, that, that really fired up my Uncle Harry. Sure, I mean, sure. He, even, though, even though it was uh, his dad that yeah. he got in a fight with, it, that just really made him all the more vigorous Vigorous about getting getting into the war effort and helping out his country. Now, he went in at at Purdue there, of course, um, he actually started to go in as an Air Force candidate, is that correct? Uh, yeah, uh, him and uh, my, uh, him and uh, a bunch of his buddies there at Purdue, they actually enlisted as going, they wanted to go through the Air Force because they wanted to get in the war effort. They thought they could do that a lot faster. Mm-hmm. So he, uh, and it turns out that my Uncle Harry was the only one that actually followed through with going the, oh, really? the, going the Air Force route rather mm-hmm. than go, staying back and having the Army uh, kind of take their time and deploy him that right, way. Right. But my Uncle Harry, he was stationed uh, down in Texas and then later went to California for his Air Force training mm-hmm. and actually actually got his commission as the Air Force. Okay. But as the war was ramping up, uh, especially when D-Day happened, um, our American troops and everything, uh, we started losing a lot of troops and sure. everything. So they changed uh, Uncle Harry's commission. Uh, instead of going to the Air Force, they changed him back to the Army uh, since he had artillery training right, right. And, and officer training. Right, right. And this this really disappointed my uncle. Sure. But, but he was he was willing to do what the Army he wanted. wanted to do. Yeah. And there weren't any, probably no questions about that. When the military yeah. said, this is what you're going to do, that's what he yeah, did. Yeah. And, of course, out of the sense of duty that this man had, that's very understandable. Now, of course, he was a commissioned officer. He's a second, Louis, as a second lieutenant. Yeah, second lieutenant. Uh, yeah. As he went into the... Um, uh, the army side of it there, right? And uh, he spent how much time stateside before he actually got uh, shipped over to Germany? Uh, it was about let's see, he had some army training also when he came back from the Air Force training. So he was uh, they they wanted uh, things were so bad over there, and they were losing so many men that my uncle, even though he was green. 
he, he was billed as one of the what they said was a 90 day one 90 day wonder i remember that where they where they actually turned them around in 90 days and shipped them off right yeah. right yeah. and the, now that's such an amazing thing and then of course for um for what and we'll tell you the story here in a few moments about what harry did which earned him the medal of honor um but for them to have a guy like that that is so green as you say but really was acted like a, a pro i mean he was a veteran yeah. that was really uh, understood what war was and he really obviously gave his life for it but uh let's let's talk a little bit about the story here uh, of uh, harry and uh, as a um, second lieutenant of his platoon uh, let's let's tell the story. Okay, when my uncle Harry actually uh, received his orders uh, to go over there, uh, he was uh, stationed or he went in as a uh, second lieutenant, and he was in the uh, 318th uh, Regiment, 80th Division, and that was uh, the famed uh, Patton's Third Army. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So wow. uh, my uncle Harry, even though he was green, uh, they put him in Company L, uh, which uh, stands for the Long Virgin Love Company. Okay. So he was in Company L there, and when he first went in there, um, he was even though he was with the, the platoon leader. All these other guys uh, had been seeing action and everything. Right, right. So my uncle Harry, uh, he just got over there, you know, uh, in th uh, three weeks, and right. uh, uh, he was um, uh, green and he d hadn't seen combat, and mm -hmm. uh, he knew uh, from some of the letters that he wrote home, he knew in his own mind that he had to earn his uh, men's respect. Right, right. So yeah. on one occasion, especially. Uh, starting out, before they got in, even in combat, uh, my uncle uh, was able to um, uh, rig up a shower for his men out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, wow. And uh, after they hadn't bathed for like uh, a month or more sure. on end there. So that 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 started to get Put a lot of res yeah. respect on the for list, man. Yeah. Sure. And one of the things that my uncle Harry wrote in uh, one of his letters, too, was that he knew that uh, he had to be out front. He had to, he had to be the front be man the because he he had to show his men that uh, he wouldn't have them to do anything that he wasn't willing to right, do. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, you know, and there's, uh, you know, story after story of people that that weren't didn't lead that way. They said, yeah. okay, well, here's what we're doing. You guys go do it. Well, Harry was not going to be that way. He was going to. Yeah. show the way and lead the way for his men so yeah. and my, uh, that would earn your loyalty right away yeah that's for sure and my uncle harry uh here here's a tidbit that uh i never knew until i started uh, really digging in mm -hmm. that my uncle harry was actually the very tip since he was le the leading his platoon he was the very tip of the spear that was able to penetrate uh, what they called the Siegfried line. Right, right, okay, and, and sure. It was uh, basically, uh, what it was, was Hitler's last stand. Last stand, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, he was actually the point of, uh, the, the, tip the, of spear, the spear, tip of the spear that uh, on Patton's mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. third army there, mm -hmm. so. Now you gotta remember everybody that uh, Harry was 22 years old at this time. Yes. Um, and he's coming up on his 23rd birthday, obviously, but uh, um, then of course, obviously, they got into combat and uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about that. If I, I could read this. Sure. Here, uh, the actual citation here, uh, reads as follows. This the actual it's signed by Harry Truman. Yeah, it's signed yeah, by wow. Harry Truman. It, it's <laughs> oh, the actual citation there, and it, it reads as follows: uh, Lut Second Lieutenant Harry J. Michael was serving as a rifle platoon leader when his company began an assault on a wooded ridge northeast of the village of Niesersdorf, uh, Germany, early on March 13, 1945. A short distance up the side of the hill, Lieutenant Michael, at the head of his platoon, heard the click of an enemy machine gun bolt. Now, there's a little tidbit uh, on this, too, on other uh, things that I've read. Mm -hmm. uh, men in his platoon came up to him and was, was going to say something, and Harry or whispered to him, shut it. Yeah. That means do not talk. Right, right. So Harry already <laughs> so, knew what was going so on. So he, and right after that, he heard a machine gun bolt. He uh, saw a flock of birds uh, come up out, oh, of, really? out of the clearing there. So kind of gave it away. He but... knew, but he didn't tell his uh, men what he was going to do. He, mm -hmm. just, he just told the guy that uh, he was closest to that you hold the men here 
and uh, I will be back. Okay, let, let me go on with the citation sure. here. Quietly halting the company, he silently moved off into the woods and discovered two enemy machine gun and crews. Executing a sudden charge, he completely surprised the enemy and captured the guns and crew. Yes, wow. yeah, so this is single-handedly. Yeah. At daybreak, enemy voices were heard in the thick woods ahead. Leading his platoon in a flanking movement, they charged the enemy with hand grenades and after a bitter fight, captured 25 members of an SS Mountain Division, third artillery pieces and 20 horses. Now a little tidbit about this uh, SS Mountain Division. This was Hitler's finest. They were the elite, weren't they? Yes, they were the elite. Mm. And let me continue here. Uh, while his company was establishing its position, Lieutenant Michael made two personal reconnaissance missions of the woods on his left flank. Now, this was uh, my uncle going uh, by himself. Right, right. On the first mission, he killed two, wounded four, and captured six enemy so soldiers single-handedly. Wow. On the second mission, he captured seven prisoners. During the afternoon, he led his platoon in the frontal assault of a line of enemy pillboxes, successfully capturing the objective killing 10 and capturing 30 prisoners. The following morning, now uh, a lot of this uh, Harry did on his birthday because his birthday was, uh, was on the March 13th. Right, right. Uh, the following morning, the company was subjected to sniper fire. Second Lieutenant Harry J. Michael, in an attempt to find the hidden sniper, was shot and killed. The inspiring leadership and heroic aggressiveness displayed by Lieutenant Michael uphold the highest traditions of the military service and it signed uh, Harry Truman. Wow, what a, st I mean, I don't think any of us, and of course I'm not a veteran and never was in the military or anything like that, but uh, I you just can't imagine uh, the kind of courage and valor, and that's why they give these, I mean, there's only been about 3,500 of these medals given out, just for the record, since the Civil War. And you think about the millions of men and women that served, you know, um, Harry J. Michael was one of those people that received that, and after hearing that account, you understand why he received that medal. Oh, yeah. yeah. And one of the other things, uh, uh, one of the other articles, uh, uh, other than the citation, went into a little greater detail, that uh, at the actual moment when my Uncle Harry got killed, um, uh, there was an account uh, in one of the articles that said his platoon was pinned down by two uh, snipers, and Harry made a flanking motion and got one of the snipers, but uh, the other one got, got him. him. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's my personal opinion that uh, they might have sent that one out as a decoy, sure. but, but I don't know for sure. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, also, and we talked, I think, a couple days ago, uh, there was actually communications from the uh, Nazi higher command that there was this platoon that was causing all kinds of problems and that they needed to get out there and, and take care of that platoon. Is that correct? Yes. My, uh, or the government uh, actually Released. of the United States uh, actually uh, army intercepts of, right. of the Germans talking about the, how much damage uh, my this... Uncle Harry's platoon was doing. <laughs> so I, th I think that's why they sent out these uh, two snipers sure. to silence them. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, but just to think about, man, they were causing so many problems for the Nazis that, hey, they said, we got to take care of this and to send out a force to actually do that. I mean, that's just, just astounding. Yeah, that's so, just almost unheard of. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's just it's just a tremendous story. And I got to tell you, for ever since I've I've known about Harry Michael for probably 20 years, and I've always wanted to do something. I'm a history teacher by my nature. I've always wanted to do something because, number one, it's such a fascinating story. But also, number one, he's from here. He's one of us. Oh, yes. You know, and that's something that we can all take great pride in. He was a Melfort High School graduate. Obviously, Melfort got melted into Walwasi High School, which is where I attended for three years and graduated in 1971. But to have... Uh, uh, a man of this stature and with this highly decorated uh, come out of your area, that's just remarkable. There was uh, uh, there was one article also that I read that really kind of put it in perspective that uh, it, uh, this uh, great hero that my uncle was, but he came from a very humble uh, background oh, yeah. of uh, the family farm growing sure. up because you know all the kids and my mom even spoke of this also, you know, all the kids uh, back then, they helped with the farm, family farm. Oh, sure. Keeping it going, mel Absolutely. milking the cows, doing all the chores oh, and yeah, doing yeah. whatever. So, so my uncle, you know, 
uh, came from a very humble background. Yeah, yeah. Another tidbit about my uncle's uh, veracity was uh, back when he was uh, playing basketball in, in school at Melford, mm -hmm. uh, one day his uh, basketball shoes came up missing. Oh, really? And he was just incensed, and he, he went and told his coach, he said, you know, I think since these shoes were under your guard here at Melford School, I yeah. think you should replace them. And the, and the coach didn't see it that way. So Harry and his sticking to his principles, he yeah. went he went ahead and practiced in his stocking feet, and and he was willing to play in his stocking feet too until the, until the school replaced him. And by golly, the school the school it. replaced him. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty yeah, pretty oh, good. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, he had to be, uh, I mean, a leader in so many different ways. Uh, and as you said, the humble beginning and, and learning how to work and how to use your hands. And, uh, and then, of course, obviously, he was a pretty smart fellow going on to Purdue and uh, doing what he did. And uh, it, it's just a remarkable story. And, of course, um, you know, he was killed the day after his 23rd birthday. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah. And when yeah. They, they he was interred in Germany for a bit, but then his remains were brought back to back here. Is that correct? Uh, yes, he was in the uh, army uh, hospital there in Germany for a little while, and then until the, his remains got released there, and then the, came back, and uh, they actually came in on a train and went to uh, Wade Mishler's Mishler, oh, yeah, fun Wade funeral Mishler. home, yeah, mm -hmm. and the actual uh, showing, uh, the very next, they came in on a Wednesday at 9.30 in the evening. The very next day on Thursday, uh, the remains were shipped out here to the house the here. Yeah. The, this is this is the house that Gary, Harry grew up on. Sure. And right behind us here right. is where the casket was, was, right right where the piano is now. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So they had back then it was uh, customary to have, very have the showing right in the farmhouse. Mm -hmm. Yep. So now Harry is not buried in the Melfort Cemetery. He's buried actually in Goshen. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Yes. There. Uh, he's very buried uh, aside of my uh, grandmother Ida May Michael. And my grandfather, uh, Plomer Ray Michael, okay. and, and also Georgina. There was five. Uh, Harry had uh, besides my mom. There was my uncle John, also mm -hmm. uh, my uncle Harvey, mm -hmm. and also a uh, little girl uh, Geor Georgina. And uh, she she actually tragically died one month after, after she was birth. born. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they're all buried at Violet Cemetery. Okay. But at uh, Melford Cemetery, they actually have a monument to give honor to my Uncle Harry. Absolutely. And also have a drive at Melford Cemetery yeah. named after. Well, Richard, I can't thank you enough. Um, if there's um, and I, if there's anything else you want to add, feel free uh, yeah, yeah, to do it. Please do. All right. This is actually, I don't know if you can all see it, but this is actually the, uh, the, the memorial thing. death announcement. Uh, there was uh, one letter, especially, that my uncle referred to uh, as he wrote home that said a burden was lifted from his shoulders. And that is the day that he actually gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ wow. and asked the Lord into his heart. Sure, sure. So I, my personal opinion is that that, get, that gave him the courage sure. and the peace of knowing that whatever happened, Jesus would he be with him. Be, be taken care of. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, too, the, and this is, uh, this is being shown to the entire student body, and I hope that all of you um, young people out there uh, are listening and, and, and paying attention to this because uh, not everybody is going to be a Medal of Honor winner, but there are so many different ways that you can add to and make uh, a positive impact on the society. I don't care whether you're a truck driver or whether you're a you know, a, a pharmacist or a, one of the other professions or a carpenter or electrician, all of these things work together uh, to make our country a great country. And that's a burden upon you and a challenge to all of you guys and gals out there to um, accept that challenge and to live a life that is dedicated to helping and serving other people. And of course, Harry J. Michael is a, an incredible example of that. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, we will uh, have a little uh, wrap up here on uh, the show. And uh, we certainly, once again, appreciate everything uh, that you've shown us here. And there's just a plethora of information here that uh, is very incredible. So thanks for so much for being with us, all Richard. Right. Uh, let me just say, I, I thank you for uh, allowing me the opportunity. Uh, all you boys and girls out there and teachers as well, or anybody that sees 
this video. Uh, whenever, whenever you see a veteran, a lot of times they wear hats uh, of uh, their service, like World War II or in the Vietnam War. Just go up and and say thank you. Absolutely. Just you know, well during Corona, you probably can't shake hands, but just let right. them know that they're appreciated and and thank you for their service or thank them for their service because boys and girls, you know, this in the world we live in. Uh, it's uh, becoming apparent that our our generations are not familiar with what our fighting men and women went through for, right. the, for the freedoms that we enjoy today. Right. So please, please thank them for what they did because what they went through is enormous for our freedoms today. Please. Absolutely. It. Richard, thanks again for everything. We really appreciate it. And uh, it's just been a real honor to be with you and to see all of this and to put this together so that everybody can share in uh, 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 what a wonderful and incredible man Harry J. Michael was. Oh, thank you much, Dave. We'd like to thank our students who put this video together, who brought the idea together, uh, our audio media production students, our student council, who along with 1971 graduate and a former colleague of mine, Dave Baumgartner, who, who passionately has pursued Harry's story. So. We hope you enjoyed this, but more importantly, we hope that it was meaningful for you. And again, once again, thank you to all of our veterans for willing to put your life on the line for our freedom. Thank you.